With the release of Disney's newest piece of Star Wars content, The Mandalorian, on their streaming service Disney+, Plus, I have decided to make a video going over what we already know about Mandalorians in Star Wars canon. Greetings fellow science fiction fans, you are watching all things sci-fi, and in this video we're going to be covering the Mandalorians from Star Wars. Originating from the planet Mandalore in the Outer Rim, the Mandalorian's history was one of war and conflict that granted them a reputation as one of the most feared warriors throughout the galaxy. Even prior to the formation of the Old Republic, war dominated their way of life. Ancient Mandalorian society was structured like a pyramid, with the leader taking on the title of Mandalore, whose authority and rule was enforced by a group known as the Protectors. Below them were the different political factions that were known as Houses, that were comprised of family clans. An example of these houses is House Vizsla, which was made up of Clan Vizsla and Clan Wren. Mandalorians were heralded as one of the most feared groups of warriors in the galaxy, and because of this, combat and pride quickly consumed their culture. As such, single combat was integral to the culture and spirit of the Mandalorians, and they had a strong code of honour that could be invoked to settle disputes with one-to-one -one combat that would conclude with the death of one opponent. This is seen in Rebels, when Sabine challenged Fen Rao. But the Mandalorian warmongering ways soon turned to dreams of expansion, and a group of Mandalorian warriors called the Crusaders began waging war against others to conquer their worlds. Armor clad and wielding swords, these Crusaders lay waste to many worlds during their wars. The Crusaders conquered many worlds and systems beyond their own. Among these planets was Cronest and Conquer Dawn. The Mandalorian Crusaders' expansion eventually brought them into conflict with the Jedi Order and the Old Republic they protected. However, to the surprise of the Mandalorians, the Jedi's use of the Force presented them with a challenge they had not yet faced before. However, this disadvantage was quickly resolved as the prideful Mandalorians would never allow it to stand, and because of this, their technology advanced quickly. Despite this almost never-ending conflict, the Mandalorians and the Jedi were not always in conflict. One of the best examples of this was when the Mandalorian Tar Vizsla was inducted into the Jedi Order as a child. He later went on to create the Darksaber, a unique lightsaber. After his death, the Jedi kept the weapon and the Mandalorians waged war against the Old Republic. During the last centuries of the Old Republic, members of House Vizsla infiltrated the Jedi Temple on Coruscant and stole the Darksaber. The saber was later used to unite the houses and clans throughout their territory. However, despite the unity that House Vizsla had brought to Mandalore, the constant warfare and relentless campaigns of war ravaged the planet, with the last great struggle between the Jedi and Mandalorians taking place on Mandalore, which left the planet's surface a lifeless, white desert that necessitated the people to live in hermetically sealed dome cities. Around a thousand years later, in the years prior to the invasion of Naboo, a civil war broke out between the Mandalorian people over competing ideals within Mandalorian society. One group who wished to have Mandalorians become a more peaceful people after the devastation of their homeworld, and another group that wished for Mandalorians to return to their warrior past. With the aid of the Jedi, the new Mandalorians were eventually victorious, with Satine Kreis ruling as Duchess, and the warrior clans being exiled to Mandalore's moon, Concordia. During the Clone Wars, the leaders of the warrior clans, now reformed as Death Watch, plotted their return to power by conspiring with Separatist leader Count Dooku. Death Watch were seen as terrorists and were despised by the people of Mandalore up until their introduction to Lord Maul. His Shadow Collective was used to win back the support of the Mandalorian people, and after Maul's rise to power, he killed the prior leader of Death Watch, Pre Vizsla, to assume control. This split Death Watch, and yet another civil war was ripe on Mandalore. The fragile nature that Mandalore was left in at the end of the Clone Wars allowed the Empire to take control of the Mandalorian people. The Empire appointed former Death Watch member Gar Saxon as the Imperial Viceroy of Mandalore and would go on to serve the Imperial military as Imperial Super Commandos. Saxon received heavy resistance from many Mandalorian factions, including one led by Duchess Satine's sister, Bo-Katan. The resistance was met with heavy violence from the Empire, as they unleashed a deadly weapon named the Duchess on the Mandalorian people, which was unwittingly built by a young Mandalorian named Sabine Wren. The resistance, however, was able to overcome Saxon's imperial rule, and Lady Bo-Katan assumed the Darksaber and the mantle of leadership over the Mandalorian clans. However, the most iconic piece of Mandalorian lore would have to be their armor, as it is seen all throughout Star Wars media, as it has become somewhat legendary at this point. Mandalorian armor developed a legendary reputation that was feared across the galaxy. 
The armor was visually unique with its honeycomb plate patterns and T-shaped visors. Most Mandalorian armor was designed as a response to the Mandalorian Jedi War and would be passed down through generations. As such, their armor was packed with anti-Jedi tools such as jetpacks, magnetized boots, tactical displays, and arm gauntlets that featured weaponry and tools designed to combat the abilities of a Jedi. As well as being immensely powerful, their armor was filled with the honors of their clans, and any damage or defacing of it would be seen as a very dishonorable act. The Mandalorians also had an interesting creation story in real life too. Here's some cool behind the scenes facts. When Empire Strikes Back was in pre-production, there was an idea for a squad of super commandos from the Mandalore system armed with weapons built into their white suits. The costume prototype was then repainted for Boba Fett, and the idea of Mandalorians was paid service to in the Empire Strikes Back novelization. As mentioned in the novelization, Mandalorians were now imagined as a group of evil warriors defeated by the Jedi Knights during the Clone Wars. And that's it, all we know about Mandalorians in the current Star Wars canon. Now with the Mandalorian series on Disney+, Plus, I can't wait to see where they take the Mandalorians next in the Star Wars universe. I'd love to hear your favourite things about Mandalorians in the comments below. You've been watching all things sci-fi, and may the Force be with you.